When last we left off, we were comparing a couple of vectors. I realized we forgot to discuss a couple of things, which is, of course, we might want to do more than just ask if a is equal to b, which, of course, is giving us the element-by-element -element comparison, where, in this case, only one element uh, is identical, which, of course, should be the first one. We can compare that visually, which seems to be true. Um, we may want to do some other things. Of course, we may want to go as a greater than b, and this will do the same sort of things. So it'll do element by element comparisons there, or we can ask uh, not equal to uh, as well. These are all standard, fairly standard in most programming languages, but it's just important to to know how to do these. Um, and of course, there's uh, uh, some other ones. The the uh, one other issue you may want to do is you say, okay, well, we, this is element by element, but we want to know if a equals b exactly, if, the, if not the element by element, but is the whole vector identical to one another. And there's a number of ways of doing this, but the easiest way of doing it is to use a function called identical, and we'll just go uh, whether uh, a and b are identical, and you can check that this gives the right behavior by going, say, let's make b2 equal to b, and we can go identical for b2 and b and see, in fact, that they give the same identity. So these are all things you can do. And as we will learn how to use the help files, we'll see that there's many other things that you can do. But here are just a couple of examples. OK. Like I mentioned, R is really based around writing uh, functions. And m many things that you do in R um, are written as functions in R. Uh, some things are sort of hidden behind the, behind the um, behind the language and they're actually calling either C code or Fortran code in, in a couple of, of cases. But in general, we'll want to see what it's doing. And there's many pre-built functions that we're going to do. We've already used one, which was length. So we could ask what the length of C was, and it was a vector of length 8. And this is an example of one of those uh, pre-built functions. There's many of these, and we're going to use many of them. There's things like we can compute the mean. This is a numeric vector, so there should be no reason not to compute the mean, or the sum which will give us uh, the sum of all elements of this vector, things like the standard deviation or the variance, and we'll just define those terms in, in, uh, in future lectures. And we can even ask things like what the correlations among things, and we can compute something like the Pearson, cor um, the, uh, Pearson moment correlation, and just go correlation between those two vectors, in this case negative 0.29. We don't need to worry about what that means, particularly other, other than seeing that there are these pre-built functions. And of course, just like we've done before, if we so desire, we can store those values. So if we want to store value from uh, the mean value for the vector c, we may call it mean underscore c, um, and we just go mean c. We call that back, and of course we get our answer. Um, there's a number of of other things that we can do, uh, and we could look at all the underlying uh, code for, for these sorts of functions. You can just go like that, and here's the underlying code. What it's saying here is that it's somewhat hidden because there may be other methods, so there may be class-specific methods, and we will deal with the idea of different classes and different methods for each class in a little bit, although if you're coming from other languages like Python, you're already reasonably familiar with, with object-oriented languages and the idea of, of generic. Uh, uh, calls using certain names as a generic. Um, there's functions that can do useful operations like combine two vectors together, and this will be a typical thing to do. So if we want to take the two vectors we created, A and B, and basically stack them together as a matrix, we can call that D, and we're going to use C bind, which stands for column bind. And then we get uh, a somewhat different looking um, uh, structure of an object. This is a matrix that we've actually created, and we'll see that shortly. Um, in fact, we can ask this directly. Is dot matrix will allow us to say, is this object that we've just created a matrix? And it is true. We can do the same thing for A or B, and of course it'll say false, because those are vectors. How do we know that they're vectors? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, we can use a couple of very important things. So if you want to know the basic uh, attributes of the object that you have. There's two important functions that you're going to use a lot. One's called mode and one's called class. Mode is going to give you the basic uh, underlying data type that you're using. So for instance, mode of everything that we've looked at so far is going to be numeric, whether it's uh, A, B, and I think D 
uh, the, even though D is a matrix and A and B were not, or we tested only one of them, but A was not a matrix. So what's going on here? It's because all of the elements in this are, are numbers. And R does things a little bit differently. Again, this is uh, geared towards people who have data. And so the idea is we're not going to, by default, assume things are integers. We're going to actually assume that you want numeric, that you want floating point numbers. So numeric essentially is a, is a double floating point number um, by default um, that you will use. If you want to know something like, well, is this a, a, a vector, which by default is just called numeric, or if it's, say, something like a matrix, you use, not surprisingly, the class function. And so you can call class of A and B. It's going to just call it numeric, and that's just their generic term also for vector. But if we do class for D, and again, if you remember, that's, that's a matrix. And if you remember, D, of course, is a matrix. It's a, a two columns by four row matrix. Um, um, so even though that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, while uh, these are all numbers, you, you need to understand the distinction. As we will see uh, in the next screencast, some of the different classes that we can come across and, and some of the different basic data types. And there's, I think, five or six basic data types that are uh, by default uses and then many classes uh, that we use, although we, we, we in this class will probably only use a small subset of those.